Yep, Sean Tigo sure loves his new kitchen. Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome back to RimWorld. Sean Tigo and Michael were through the morning, uh, well, through the, the early hours of the morning, cooking like crazy. We are already up to 50, and I'm not sure if that counts for them all. What do we have in here? 16, 24... Oh, I signed them both to go move things and how they're doing it. Okay, well, we'll see what lands in here. 60 so far. I've got these uh, stockpiles here. If I've got them programmed right, they should be counting. So we'll see what what we get in the end. 57. Well, we're eating them as fast as we're... <laughs> there goes the count. Okay, something like that. But the dogs are, are filling up the, uh, the spaces as, as fast as they're using them up, and it's working well working really well so new kitchen is a success we still have some work to do we've still got to uh, go through and smooth the floors I want to drop some statues here and there which I've assigned all of the art benches to uh, be ready for whenever I do it get somebody to to go and do some arting so that is that but so much more that I did through the night and didn't do through the night so I, I ran the game that night the whole next day and that night and we're at nine o'clock the next morning so a day and a half has gone by since last episode. Just going through and finding all the little things that need to be done. Um, oh, here's something I didn't do. It'd be nice to go ahead and put concrete in over here. Let's see, let's click on that. So from there, across to there. Okay, so grab floors, concrete. This will, oh, it's going to stay for me? Oh, well, that's weird. And can I put it there? I can. All right, so that we can keep trees from spontaneously growing in this area. Something like that. Okay, well, that's that. But lots of things that I have done that I want to go through and, and point out, as well as a couple of comments that have come in and deal with those. But, um, hmm, where do you start? Let's start with what didn't happen. Day and a half of the dogs and pigs having access from here to here. And you can see how much you're still left to do. So I've got a feeling we've got pretty much the whole winter before we're going to see this actually emptied. They're actively doing it. Well, we're wandering now. Ham, what you doing? You're consuming potatoes. All of that kibble. No, not much kibble. All right, we need to make some kibble. Okay. Um, yeah, so we've got to get more people onto the butchering. I did move kibble back to the... the get back here the number one spot on both benches so kibbles first butchering is after um what else did i do i went through and fine-tuned these stockpiles a bit we don't need that much hay over here we just need enough to be able to make kibble with and even then we're seeing that the hay is dropping quick you know winter is only 15 days but we then have to wait to grow another batch and then we have to harvest that batch so i went ahead and switched uh kibble off of or hay off of kibble production. Just gonna make it out of vegetables now, which we have plenty of and which we are growing plenty more of. So I think we can we can handle that and save the hay for the, uh, the grazing animals. But what I did was I set in each of the four spots, just two places with a critical priority on, on hay storage. Those two over here, uh, one more time there, and two over here. So everything else, this is just going to be meat over here now. Meat and spare kibble in case we make more kibble than we have spaces for it. We probably should up the kibble production. Otherwise, it's, it's just uh, uh, hunted animals in here. But it's going to take a while to get everything moved over. We've not only got food to move over, but we're out here making lots of wood and quite a few other things are going on. Lots of steel is coming out of here and things like that lots of of uh chunks that have got to get moved out of our way as we're we're building so lots happening there what else did i want to point out i've already seen a couple and kind of working myself in a circle here um down and over here let's go this way klaus and sangria's room is pretty much together I had klaus build most of it handy built the uh, the nightstands and one of them came out normal so we're going to uh, toss that one and build another one she did get the uh, lynx chair built uh, klaus got the wooden dresser going and there's art on it Ooh, see he got art on well that's michael's statue was there art on something else that he built 
Just the bed, that's right. Art on the bed. We read that last time. But I see we have art on the wooden dresser. Excellent. Called Red Bison. We want a bed that has nothing to do with a bison. Art. <laughs> An engraving on this furniture resembles Grandma gazing into the distance and glowing softly. Four stink... <laughs> Four stink bugs rest peacefully. <laughs> oh, this game. The smiling head of a nephew watches over all. The image somehow expresses both good will and oppression. This image relates to Grandma meditating on the 5th of September. <laughs> oh, the disconnected... <laughs> Okay, well, that's what Klaus and Sanger get to stare at every, every day in bed. <laughs> okay, Rimworld's fun, isn't it? Um, I need to get a back door cut in over here somewhere. We're going to need to get this sealed up soon with a cooler in it, but that's... But they did get quite a bit of progress made on the jail last night while they were working on this. They just can't help but go and do everything next to it, too. And when they want to bring supplies over to one thing, they've got to bring it to half the other ones. So... Little by little, progress is being made over here. I went back into the tree area now that we're into winter and put all the grow uh, zones back in, including one accidental little potato that landed there. But I think that's been there for a while. I think when I deleted this one last time, I didn't delete that space. So they've been they've been farming potatoes out of that square all this time. But I got uh, a lot of the trees back in so that they can produce more wood during the winter when it isn't such a rush to get hay grass and, and food going. Still have this over here to hopefully still um, harvest. That's the word I'm looking for. We'll see if that works. You are traders, or visitors. That's right, that happened in the night. Yeah, I see they just got here. A group from Rana of the River are visiting the colony. They seem to have a few items to trade. And hopefully they have different items than the shaman who just brought a bunch of weed. Um, you guys, let's see. Klaus, what you up to? And we'll continue our quick tour while he's on his way to that. You're consuming pemmican. Interesting. All of our meals are now over here. No meals left. So eventually they're going to have to work the way over to here. Now, if we had mods running, which I don't, we could have the rim fridge in here. We could stick a, a fridge and a table in random places all around the map. But I'm going modless for this one. So, do we keep a fridge and a small space and just have a couple of meals here and there? I don't know. Because I don't know what the final plan for this is. For all I know, that's going to be a, uh, a solar panel right there. So, you know, once we get all this ripped out and start thinking about our main entrance to the base. And I'm guessing a wedding chapel is going to be built into that main entrance. Though it would be nice to get them near food. That would be. They had a wedding over here and meals over there. And hopefully the final version of RimWorld will inco incorporate uh, food into the receptions and parties. I haven't heard word of that, but that seems like a logical thing to do. Um, somehow I got from here to there to here. Ah, uh, hay grass. That's what I was thinking of. So, Klaus, let's get you... First of all, going over and trading with Pony Boy there. And then I need... Um, what was I thinking of over here? This. We got power again. We got, we got battery storage. So this one's probably about ready to turn off and turn this guy on and get it charging up. So we need to get somebody to do that. And preferably in reverse order. In fact, let me assign that real quick. David, you are, you're working on some, let's see, Natalia can do it. You're making a vest. You're working on plasteel turrets. I got you going on that one. Let's have you, uh, Natalia, trip that one and trip that one. Actually, I got to do it a different way. There and there. Now, then you can go back and do whatever you want. But, um... Well, I won't take off on David yet. What else went on last night? So basically, it's my time to go through without having to narrate and just plan all the little things that we talked about but are going to take time, like setting up in the corners where the the orbital trade beacon doesn't reach and setting little stockpiles in there for wood and for block and eventually, oh, I don't know, steel and something else that's important to just to have available to us um things like that um setting walls in 
and I did get David and Eric to drop off supplies. Tomislav too. Drop off supplies over here to get the walls filled in. Not necessarily build, but at least st support columns here and there. And get this sealed in over here. Tomislav's working on that to open up our little area right here. But there's something else that came up. Um, this area was planned for a, a, a footprint of this. Just get this basically moved over there. Everything but this one. Don't know that this is going to stay here, though. It could be rebuilt somewhere else. I always have those in my dining room. But this dining room just isn't big enough. In fact, it really isn't big enough. I'm almost kicking around not building this stuff here and opening this back up again and having a, a big dining room and then find somewhere else for our rec room that could be twice as big too. And one of them, and or both of them, including this guy. All we need is one comms console working somewhere on the colony. We can have other ones turned off and then turn them on when we want to use them so that we don't have to run from here all the way up to there or something like that in order to use it. So there's that to think about long term. But what got me talking about that? Oh, this did. Five components. Where is the other six? Somewhere in our colony, we have a total of, is it down here? No, a total of, a total of five components. Oh, David snagged the last of them to build this with. And someone else probably grabbed a pile of them to go build another turret somewhere. You need to be turned off. How? Oh, because you're not hooked up to power yet. Ah, okay. So we actually have a turret a bug run, a bug turret chase up and running out of the many of them that were planned for the for the whole colony, which are going to just suck up power and components and everything else, and we're just about out of components. We do have, I want to say two, but I went looking for them before the episode, and I only found one, and I double-click, and I only get various. Um, and what are the various? I only see one thing highlighted. What's the other thing that gave it various? I don't know. Unless there's this is on top of something else. Chip junk. Chip junk. Huh. I don't know. But one chip junk, which means eight components are left. And then we get in various places still some... Oh, right there. Some components there. Or at least uh, compact machinery. So there's at least three veins of those left. I think there's more that I haven't tracked down yet up on these further reaches, which means you are steel, which means I need to be there and babysit it when they mine them so that when they mine the last one, I can get them to carry it all back home again. I wonder what's hiding in here. Those are those little mysteries. You just you just want to go up and put everything aside and just go and bang on that wall for a while. But no, we're busy right now. So we need to find a permanent source of components, which is something we talked about last time, which led me to laying this out or a couple of, a couple of episodes ago. I don't know how much power a component table takes, but I don't want to keep adding power to this side that's not necessary. So we need components, and I suspect that maybe this room is actually more of a component assembly, uh, machine table, and something else in here. And then this next one can be research. The next one can be sewing, and the next one could be storage of all the, the fabrics and leathers and whatnot. The next one, I don't know. Um, it was sewing and research that were taken out of there. Art is staying right there. So these two are leaving, and that one is now taken care of as well as components. So I don't know what the last subject may be. Up here was going to be block cutting. So we've got to come up with a reason for this one. It may just be more storage, but we'll see. And then that's storage that will have access to an orbital trade beacon. And this was, I, th I was thinking block and chunk storage for the cutting room right over here, which doesn't need a, a trade beacon to be in there. So long term, that's what's the plan there. But we need to get a component assembly table going, and that requires research. We are so close to finishing this. I've taken Tomislav off of research because he's so good at so many other things. So... We've got to fire up the multi-analyzer again to get going on these again, but we need this guy. 3,000. How much is left on this one? 
of 63, so we're definitely going to finish that one. Then we're going to dive into component assembly and see what it takes to do that. We, I remember it takes a lot of components to build it. I mean, it was a lot. Was it something like 30? I mean, it was when I first saw it, I've never built one. I first saw that I kind of threw up my, my hands and says, oh, you're kidding me, and I never built it. So we didn't get into that or didn't need to get into that for Alpha 13. We still had access to enough to where we never floundered. But we didn't have a base like this. And this is only, what, maybe half constructed? There's still the perimeter here and all of this, and who knows what else we're going to come up with by the time we get to here. So, yeah, we're going to need components. So, Tomislav, that's my long-winded way of saying, Tomislav, you need to get back to research. All right, cook on two. So that's your your fallback, your first fallback. And construct right there. You're really good at grow, though. You are. Let's make grow your next fallback. Eight of 20, your construct skill is 10 of 20. Hmm, but I can always manual assign, manually assign you to a construction project. Whereas if you have nothing to construct, it'd be nice if you'd head out and, you know, go and harvest a bunch of food. That's pretty important to keep uh, constantly moving, or constantly rotating. Um, so we're at 59 meals. And I'm pretty sure we are set for 60. I've got all the bills set up in the, uh, the various tables around the, around the map. So another thing that I that I do in between episodes, all that that little homework that takes up time during an episode and you know requires about the first 20 minutes just to recap all that I did. <laughs> so we're at 60. We're heading for with the fine meals, and I took the requirements down one notch on this table so that Michael could do it too, and he has just about gone up a level in cooking skill as a result. So he is real close to his, his next notch up. But Shantigo, now that I've discovered the descriptions, um, I discovered them long ago, but I've never really made the connection. What am I looking for here? Right here, cooking. So that Shantigo is actually a region known master cook. And handy construction. She is a planet known master constructor. Sangria animals a region leading master handler so david that's the the art that eric made on that chair right there about him becoming a master constructor he is actually a strong master now and eric what are you you as well strong master so michael where are you at shooting you are an expert shootist and a skilled professional artist so everyone's got their, their, their strong points. We have a very skilled professional socialite in Kaya. <laughs> sea stars, what's your peak? You are a master level miner. And grandma is a skilled professional cook. And a solid professional artist. So Alicia, she is a strong master Miner, Missa P. Whoa, is a planet leading master miner. Woohoo! Michael, got you? Yeah, we got you. Natalia, you are a strong expert intellectual and an expert doctor. You go by. What was it that you went by? It was a scientist, right? Um, where do I get that? Scientist right there. Okay. So scientist is your your branch of that skill. Put it that way. Kathra, after all this time, is now an expert artist and a very skilled professional hmm, horticulturalist. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> and a skilled professional socialite. Um, Sangria, got Sangria. And Klaus is a region-leading master social skilled... Hmm, oh, you're... You're a pilot. You're an ace. That's right. Um, construction, region known master constructor. Shantigo, we got, as well as a very skilled professional miner. Um, Rabbit, you are a region leading master growist. Growist? Gardener. There you are. Handy, we got Tomislav. You are a master doctor and expert shootist and 
a strong master researcher. And that rounds up our current crew. What will purple be if we ever get purple? Character, he is already an expert at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Warrior, expert warrior. Mm-hmm. So, anything else that I got into before we can get going? Yes, one, two more things. Um, Daniel wrote in, uh, new to the channel, and was asking about maybe a backup plan to the gauntlet. To maybe, I think this is the place he was indicating, to pop a door in here and get one of the, like a plastil turret, you know, like that guy, sitting there. So that if we get taken to the point where they're actually ready to move in, then we could open up a door and, and let loose. Which is, you know, viable. Except I've already got these guys here. So they're already in place to take out whatever turns this corner. So we're kind of backed up in that sense right now. But what it got me thinking about is these things are just kind of sitting here. We could, you know, we're, we're storing them. We could store them, and these two over here that David's working on, in places where we could use them should something completely unexpected drop in on us. Um, back to this one right here. I've designed these bedrooms. If we get a bug infestation, say in this room here, we could sneak through and trigger this door to stay open. Step in, step back out. I guess have somebody else holding this door, trying to you know survive the experience of getting in and out. And once the door is open and we're safely away from it, get around here and trip that switch or trip that switch. Turning on all the turrets. It'll start shooting into the room. They're all going to come in and attack it when they do. This one in range and this one in range is going to be shooting down here, taking out whatever shooting it. And surely one of these are going to blow up and, and cause all kinds of chaos, but hopefully take out as many bugs as possible. The other ones are eventually going to roam through and go after this one. And, and eventually we may be able to take out the bugs without sacrificing ourselves in the process. They will go anywhere there is overhead mountain. Uh, over, overhead. And where there is mountain overhead, that sounds a little better. And including rooms like this. My defense for these is to have multiple doors. Like this room right here, we can put somebody right there, put somebody right here. They're auto doors, since we get power to this one. And which is because of that one space right there we missed. So that someone can reach in, shoot a couple times, lure everybody this way, pop out. Someone else pops in, shoot from this direction, hit a couple more, pop out, and just keep doing that sort of thing. This one's kind of useless for that purpose. I left wooden doors over here thinking that if they bust their way through and get out loose, we've got all kinds of places we can, you know, we can take them out from once they're out in the wild. But it's the problem is when they're contained in here, we have to get through in and out of a door to try to take them out. This might be a good place to put a turret. I was going to put one here long term. Once we got all this mined out, I was going to put it, like, right here. So it had access to every direction. So a turret right there, another turret in here. Could do one in here, though I'd rather just let them bust their way out. The problem is, you know, we've got another defense for bugs is the boomalopes. I could set up a quick little animal zone, which I'd have to, you know, I have to delete one of these so I don't have any, vo any uh, uh, available zones left but I could void one and pop a quick animal zone one square or four squares right there and then assign all the boom loops to it and they're all going to make this boom will prey in and get inside the bugs are going to kill them they're going to go boom it's all going to light on fire and it's going to kill all the bugs you don't want to do that in your freezer not only do you have a tremendous amount of of cold temperature to overcome or at 16 degrees in here but you're going to take out all your food so you got to have another way to take out bugs that land in your freezers or land in your storage room or you don't want to burn all your storage up so we've got to come up with other ways to deal with that so a turret in here although here we've got three different doors to pop in and out of and shoot from so that's kind of nice big open spaces like that but turrets here the other possibility that ha that happens it hasn't happened this playthrough thankfully but it has happened to me often enough to where i'm assuming it's still in the game is you will just get a an attack of pirates or mechs that just drop right on top of you, right into the base. Basically into your home zone. Slam right into here, and they're inside. 
There's no time then to run over and grab that turret and run over and set it up. Or set it up. Or what have you. It needs to already be there. We're hurting on power over here. We don't want to get too many turrets up and running that aren't needed. But over here we we supposedly have enough power. So it is taking a long time to get these batteries back up. But they are getting there. So another turret here. Maybe right there. That's running 24-7. Versus these, which are on a switched circuit. Uh, where can I get access to that? Right there. So this circuit right here that switches at this point goes up and switches at this point so that we would power this side for these three turrets whenever we need them. But we could have one that's constantly powered and just ready as an insurance policy, which is another use for these guys. We can store them here or we can store them there. If we get... A poison ship dropping in we could just as easily go and uninstall the, the four of them that are going to be scattered around the base and haul them up there as go to the storage room and haul them up there so I think I want to do just that so I have a feeling this is going to be more of a catch-up episode because it's already been 25 minutes Wow um, I can't talk much faster than that you install where I can grab power that is on all the time that's kind of iffy over here huh I can get that one and that's it without running a leg over to it and I could do that too but I might have to because I can see oh I can't really over here unless it comes from all the way up there but I can see the benefit of having a turret constantly on right here and on this power grid and not this one hmm okay well that one needs to be there so let's just make that happen conduit from here, up, through, up, through, and up. We'll just have to get that thing built. It'll be on all the time. Another one. Let's... That didn't help. There you are. <laughs> so this area for pirates is dropping in on us. This area for pirates dropping in on us? I mean, they can drop into anywhere. They can plunge right through the roof. You can suddenly get a mech attack slamming right into here. So there's no way to truly anticipate all the different possibilities. Open, open wide areas are helpful. So let's install. I can grab power there. Let's do that. Right there. Now... That's dangerous for us. You've seen on some of our battles where we stepped out to shoot from here at somebody coming in and got in at the last second as they were rounding the corner just to have this turret shoot our own people trying to get back through the door because it sensed there was an enemy there. So we actually need to turn this turret off if we get an attack. So there is that to keep in mind. But... If something drops in on us, this tour is going to last much longer than these guys. Although they've got the sandbags to help them, but the hit points are so much higher. It would be nice to maybe... Boy. Yeah, think about that. Should I set these into these spaces instead and leave them on? Hmm. Gotta think about that. We could then uninstall them from these and go up if we get a raid and come back down. But, or a poison ship or something. But that way, they're, they're active and they're protected. Nothing will take them down. Hmm, i got to think more about this too. This kind of a layout when we get poison ships. This would have protected those turrets much better. Well, we'll kick that around. We've got two more being built, which I think would probably best to go mm, here. Hmm, here is dangerous. Here is dangerous. got to think about that. If we pop in the door to shoot, it could shoot us too. So is it? does it need to go in a place like right here where it can't actually hit us directly, but it can still hit bugs? But it's got to be far enough away that if it explodes, it doesn't take out all the walls. Hmm. <laughs> so many things to, that I sit there and stare at in between episodes and talk back and forth to myself before I finally just you know give up and think I'm insane. Otherwise, Kathra also gave an interesting comment that I want to follow up on. Where is our little chick? There. 
chick number one, and we still only have a chick number one. I did find one egg sitting over here from when one of our hens was sleeping over there, and I had Sangri go and get the egg and drop it off right there. So that's been done. She is now milking a cow. But the chicks, the chickens, the roosters, I don't know about the turkeys. Maybe the turkeys too, have a weakness to cold and to frost. If we get too cold, they will get frostbite. They will lose little body parts. Little chicken legs will fall off and things like that. And you can lose all your chickens in a cold snap. So it's best to have a heated room for, for them to sleep in, which is what I've made here. And I did take the wall out as one more thing that I did last uh, between episodes and moved out Sangria and Klaus and, and moved uh, a whole bunch of blueprints in for, uh, uh, for more animal beds and sleep spots, things like that. But... It would be fine if the chickens were only going to sleep here. Then, you know, we're, we're settled. We're set on that. Instead, I've got them in the kibble zone, which is what I'm calling it, for all those that ne are needing training and need access to kibble versus just hay, whereas the the ones that just eat hay, the, uh, the main pasture, you know, the, uh, the hay feeders, they live over here only. But I added that to this central area, to get into this barn over here for the smaller animals and the pigs and the pups that need to be trained still and aren't ready aren't really haulers yet to keep them in a place where they uh where they're you know it's a little bit safer put it that way so i don't have a a zone left just to put chickens in here and they may very well sleep out here because they have access to both. Grab one of these spots and go to sleep at night, which means they're going to freeze out here while they're waiting for morning to come when they can move back over to where it's warm. So we do need to think about getting a heater into this area. Temperature, heat. One is probably not going to do a great job against this area in a cold snap. We'll probably have to build... Um, where do I put you? I don't think it's a distance thing. It just it, It's just the whole area is treated as, as one zone. So I could put you right here at the beginning if I chose to. Um, that seems to end right there. Let's put you right there and get that one built. But um, if we get a cold snap, we'll just have to build some campfires in all the different places, which is why we need wood stored. And we were really lacking it. That's why I went ahead and set this up. And since all these are supposedly ready to harvest, even though they're, they're not vegetables we're, we're doing a major harvest right now so with that i think we can get going i think i've hit all the points that i wanted to if not i'll bring up whatever i notice along the way but um klaus is going to go talk to these folks david is setting up or getting done with these right here i had him stop building that one to bring materials over to this one so even if he doesn't because he's going to bed soon then someone else will. Eric, you are consuming berries. How about we go, that's just it, until we get all this move, they're wanting to take the cheap route and not get the plus five, so I gotta manually set them over to grab a real meal. Okay, so we've got what? Pony, trader, from the, yeah, from, from somebody, <laughs> with herbal medicines to sell. And wants to buy ours with pemmican to sell wants to buy ours none of those seem important right now we they have a steel spear okay and they're willing to buy all kinds of stuff with their 191 silver <sighs> yeah well we'll get rid of as many really cheap things as possible which will get rid of a lot of the uh, the space like this this cloth cowboy hat for six cents Woo! Big sale. And you've got a bowler hat you want to sell us. So let's just use this as a place to dump. Although if we buy anything from them, it'll give them more to give back to us, and we still get that thing we bought from them. But I'm not seeing anything that we truly need. We've got 132 herbal medicines that are going to spoil in a year. So, yeah, there's no point in buying any of that. So what can we get rid of, and how can I reorder this? Let's go by market value. Okay, let's go that route. Let's get rid of... All the D's. Although we're going to have a mix of D's. Yeah, they're still kind of lumped together because they are the lowest valued things. Um, yeah, we'll do that. By now, if Alicia wanted some, because she's immune to that, uh, that negative, she would have already grabbed them. So all of these can go away. Cloth pants. So it means we've got to go through the 
tailor bench and rework all of those. Um, what did I miss here? Cloth and pemmican. Okay, up into here. And that's only 55 of their 191. And we're going to clear out a lot of storage space with this. Herbal medicines. Uh, more D's over here. Okay. And again, if we could use any of these, we would have already. And is that the end of the D's? It is. So next choices are our shoddy stuff. Let's get our stuff that is already down to 61% or less or, or near. So 120 so far. All right, hang on to these. Those look pretty good. 75 t-shirt. Yeah, although that's, wow, that's 35 already for that one, okay. Um, what else is in pretty rough shape? Right there, does that finish us off? It does, and gives them an extra silver. So I guess that's all that we're gonna be able to do. Let's take you back to none, and that truly reorder things. It kind of didn't. Let's go to category. That, that's what it was. So, again, they just have these to sell us. I don't see any value in buying any of them. Okay, so I guess we're done. We got rid of a bunch of clutter, and it's probably going to say, you sure you want to give them a free dollar? Uh, proceed anyway? Yes. Confirm. All right, pause. They are over here. We bought nothing from them. We bought the silver, but a pig will take care of that. So, no problem there. So, who is doing what right now? Is no longer inspired. Oh, wow. We wasted his inspiration on a on a junk trade. Didn't think of that. Oh, well, there was no way to... Uh, well, I could have someone else do it, I guess, if I wanted to. But that's fine. So, Tomislav, you are flicking a switch. That switch. Okay. And then you are going to get back to this. So I need to flick a switch over here. So Tomislav, you are that next going to do that instead of Kaya. So Kaya can continue wherever she was, right there, whatever she was doing. Um, Andy, building power conduits. What is truly important to be built right now? Um, actually, let's have you do that. Get that one going. Uh, David is doing that. Let's clear that. I can't. Really? Now, if I clear you again, building power conduit. That's handy. Oh, I thought it was on David. That's why that went so weird. Handy, your needs are fine. David, that's what I want. I want to get rid of his, his uh, prioritization here. So if I break that and do that no break that you're going to consume berries as you were hungry you were hmm well let's just have you do this then just in case that was still in your programming so you'll just do that and be done then you'll go and actually you'll come over here and grab a fine meal reserved by all right let's do hmm what was that reserved for so who hmm who was that who was it I had come over here? Michael? Yeah, someone else was going to do that. Someone over here. It wasn't Klaus. I want to say it was Rabbit or someone. <sighs> oh, well, we'll find him. Rabbit, you are harvesting. Nope. Handy. Nope. Tomislav. Nope. Shantigo is cooking survival meals now. So we're done with, the, with um, these guys or something like that. Hmm... Now you are cooking survival meals. 62. Someone just dropped something off. Okay. Klaus, you weren't the one. You were consuming a fine meal. Eric, were you the one? You were. Maybe. Yes, you were. And you're close enough now that you can do it on your own. Okay, that's what I needed to see. Sangria is playing horseshoes. Must be 10 o'clock. So, wherever 10 o'clock hit, it doesn't matter what they were doing. They're not doing it anymore. Everybody's heading in. Which is a necessary evil it helps to keep them topped off so that we've you know we have very few mental breaks very few you can count on one hand all that we've had for a hundred and some episodes and forcing them to at least one hour of joy a day does help with that so of course having a wedding recently helps too um our visitors are visiting okay and a tree decided to grow there 
Pony, you are just wandering and you're getting whacked in the head by horseshoes. Not smart. <laughs> um, Grandma, what you doing? You are consuming berries. We gotta get these berries out of here. Come on over and grab a meal, a real meal. Who else is consuming berries? Kathra, what you doing? You're relaxing socially. Tomasov, you're relaxing socially. After that, Tomasov, you should get back to research. And hopefully this episode we get to set the other research going. Because your research capability is fast. Oh, I didn't know that was off too. Okay, Tomasov, do you really need to joy? I think you can get away without it. So let's have you do that. And hopefully you will then trigger to... Uh, to start researching. Alright, that's the step that I missed. What are you? You're a dresser. Your bedroom is going to get built soon. Okay, so Tomasov, let's watch you get this done. The, uh, I want to say the dogs. The, the, uh, uh, the pig dogs. Where are you going now? You are wearing a pack of toque. Really? Can I tell you not to? I mean, 66%? How far away is this thing? It's okay. It's close enough to where you can be happy as can be and still do that. Catherine, you are wearing an, a muffle of wool toque because you, know, you just gotta. Mm -hmm. And you're both going to take off something and somebody else is going to say, oh, oh, that's that helmet. I've got to get that helmet. That poor 70% helmet. That's, that would just make my year. And they're going to come running over to get it. <laughs> Michael, is that you? Yep. No, he wants the poor 81% helmet. <laughs> there goes his cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Alicia, which one? You know, you want to dig at granite. Oh, you want to get some work done. Thank you. Come work at this. Let's get our back door going. All right. So, another roll call. Let's start at this end. Kaya, you are still making shirts. That's right. Bills. We need to reset all of this because we just sold a bunch. So let's take you to four. Let's take you to five. And five. Yeah, we'll do five of each. Five real ones. No, uh, what just moved? What is going on here? What am I hearing? Man, it might be through my wall. It sounds like a, kind of a howling, but like a warg, but there aren't any. I wonder if somebody's making a noise in the house and it kind of sounded like the game. Yep, I just heard it again. Someone here at, at uh, Ramblerville is getting noisy out there. All right, five dusters because ours are going to be wearing out soon. Yeah, we'll do five of everything. Deep drilling is done. So let's come back to... No, let's get this. I only have... Yep, that's done. That's done enough. Let's go here. We are setting you to component assembly. And the rate that he researches... I wouldn't expect more than about an hour's worth. How fast does it go? Tomasov, you have gotten reset. Reset. Let's get you back in there. That one little microsecond is enough for you to say, I'm going to walk all the way across the map to go harvest a potato plant. They are leaving now. Get okay, run of the river. All right. How fast does this research happen? And how do we detect it? If I go to, what was that? A cow has given birth. Ooh, I have to go check that out in a moment. Um, and we'll do that right there. And then we'll go to research. So, 17 already. Okay. Well, you can do the math on how many seconds he was there and how fast that works out. But do we have two? Calf one and two. Male? Male. All right. We had twins. And we are officially in the cow business. Oh, that hay is going to go quick. Now, a lot of the hay is not in stockpiles anymore because I, I got rid of the stockpiles to consolidate things. I got rid of them outside, too. We had we never had so much that we had to use it out here. And kind of you know, got the aisles, the walkways back. So this is going to be accurate for quite some time because it's one of the distractions that are keeping the, the animals from hauling all the food over to here. But they are gradually getting it. I did also set up... Um, meat over here and vegetables over here with a, a walkway in between to be smoothed. So that was after they'd already moved some of the stuff. So I can see we do need to get some more meat going on over here. And I set the, the um, oh, what do you call them? The circumferences? What do they call them? Details, the radius to 25. So just within the freezer and the refrigerator. 
so that Shantigo has no reason to walk all the way over here to do it. Let's, if that is the case, then he can go off and work in the garden for a while and wait for the, the animals to, to restock everything. Um, okay, now, I just got to think about something. Storage, that's good. You're important, you're important, you're preferred, because these guys are critical. Right there. Yeah. So that is the natural flow. They go to there only if there's no room there, only if there's no room there. Okay. Just wanted to double check my, my thoughts there. And we're full. We are officially full. Let's turn you off. Let's turn you back on. Right there. And let's get somebody nearby to do it. Uh, so we're not... not Taking someone from a long distance over to get Michael. You're flicking a switch. Let's turn this on first. Then turn that on. So that power never gets interrupted. Okay. So you've got all that. Um, we're at 45, 46 minutes already. Don't feel like we did anything. We just basically talked about the progress of the... Hello. Of the map. You need to reinstall at. Let's set you... Well, the radius is huge. We can be anywhere. If I go here and we explode, we take out our support column. Hmm. If we go here, we can shoot whoever's at the door as a bug is approaching and the bullet goes past and takes out whoever's standing there. That's the hard part of doing that in here. If I do this... I think that door is protected down there. So we're only, and if I do this, yeah, let's go there. That's, I think someone's standing here, well, when they lean in, they're gonna get popped. But I think we're protected here at least. Okay, next one is there, the next one is here. I think it's there. So that takes care of the freezer. And right there, you, um, what do I want? Reinstall. That's the magic word. Somewhere like this. A little deeper in will guarantee at least this one is not going to be harmed. Okay, we'll do that. We're not going to get him moved real quick. I'll probably do that in between episodes, but that's the idea. So we're going to store them in places to where they would be beneficial if something spontaneously pops in on us. Um... Otherwise, what else? While they're doing their things, let's look around here a bit. We do have a bit of a herd forming here. We do need to make one more run of meat. Well, one more of many runs of meat. We have deer there. We have, unfortunately, all these animals have a pretty good chance of revenging on us. So, hmm. Anyway, well, Thomas Office is already one eighth of the way done. Good. You guys are leaving somewhere up in here. Nothing else. I'm really hoping that we get another uh, migration event coming through. We got three or four of them in a row last winter. I don't know that it is a winter event. I did some internet searching. I couldn't find anyone to tell me if there's any kind of a pattern to those. Um, jump two, we just lost a heater. Okay. Heaters, let's think about that. They'll take care of these just fine. Um, Klaus is hauling steel to granite door. Hauling steel to granite door. Oh, I bet it's one of these. Probably is. Uh, let's put you over here. But heaters, you got everything in here looking good? I think so, yeah. How are we doing? The base is, you can tell we get a cold snap. The base is actually holding temperature really well. 64 is what I've got them set for. And we're maintaining. You can see right over here. We are 37 outside. So when we get to zero outside and winter is full on, that's where we're going to have to test this. Inspiration sh shoot frenzy. Sangria wants to go shoot things. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sangria is our best animal handler, so I can't just send her out hunting. Well, I could. Grandma's also an animal handler. Hmm. What time is it? 20 hundred? Let's leave it on pause for a second. All right, let's do that. Sangria is sporting a, uh, an assault rifle right now. I was going to give that back to Michael, 
but let's let her use it for a little bit longer. So, Sangria, let's take you to a two on handle and a one on hunt. And let's put Grandma, which isn't going to work that well because she's a night crew. Hmm. So, handle is before it. You handle when, you know, late evening and early morning when you're up do as much of that as you can and then you'll fall back to cooking afterward which you are skilled enough for the in fact let's get sangria started first before i do that you are training bill let's let bill uh, uh get trained a little bit later anyway i want to what did i set the survival meals at they want to be an eight so i went and left it at an eight okay so, what was Grandma's cooking skill? Ten. Okay. She is a skilled professional. So, I think that'll be fine. That, what she would have been doing had I not moved her to handling. What she will do when there's no handling to do. Let's put it that way. Shantico is still doing his thing, but he's taken this table for some reason. Hmm. Don't know why. Um, you're close by. You're going after a rabbit. Wow. Look at that. And that's the reason why this area is protected. She cannot walk through here to go get it. She's got to go around through the doors because this is not pass passable. Cannot walk through there. So that's what has saved us at this end. Don't know how I would have created that either because you can't build on water. Oh, I thought you were after this one. A fox has taken out this one. Ah, you're after that turtle. Okay. Where'd the fox go? There was a fox on this side. You made it all the way up here? That might be the same one. I don't know. Huh. But this is a quick, easy place to go after um, game for her. So let's set up all the turtles for hunt. Any squirrels in the area? Let's get down into here. Uh, hunt you. Let's go a little further. Right there. Right there. Okay. So what else? You are a tortoise. No more of you around. You are a rat. So no more of you around. Let's see if you're any of them lower. Nope. So over in this area, which is also easy access, what's around here? You are a wild boar. Marked for hunt. Well, let's cancel that one. Uh, what else is around here? There's a sleeper right there. So rabbits. Just the two and they're already marked. Okay, you are squirrel. We've got something that's not been marked. Hunt. And any other little red dots looking for a rat. I'm not seeing one. So what's right up in this area now? What's wandered into here? Any little Z's sleeping away? None. I'm not paused, right? No, nope. Z's are moving over here. So we have no animals up here. Except for a boom rat. And someone clear over here, here. Already marked. Okay. So that's all the the uh, the easy access game in this area. So otherwise, what's happening? We're at 2200. Folks are going to bed. David, you are up and working on autosave. Um, this bedroom over here. So what would be a two-person bedroom? Not critical. What else can I get you working on instead? Um, hmm. Hard to get this in because we've got to take out so many trees. Would be nice to get a double wall in this area. Why don't you bring a pile of stone up into here, another pile of stone up into here, and see if you can't get all that constructed. And then, needs, your food is fine. Why don't you bring a pile of wood into there? and get a bunch of these boxes constructed and actually the heater is also important hmm well your food was fine i think you can hack you can tackle one more project and that needs multiple parts including components ouch so yeah that'll be your last one which will allow you to make multiple multiple trips to it rather than moving on to another project um i turned this on for uh, Alicia, and I don't think it ever got done. These bodies that I unburied to get this.
this area built are still here. Grandma, you are cooking a fine meal. Are you already there? You are, and you're as happy as can be. So, Sea Stars, where are you? You're down in here, and needs... You're in great shape. I bet you you can handle seeing a corpse, or at least a skeleton. Let's get you to do this so I can turn this off. Do that one. Eventually, want to dig up all these graves and get them all just cremated and be done. But this needs to be done. It keeps getting forgotten about, too. David is now full. Um, Miss P, actually, Sea Stars, you are a constructor. You've got some skill. Let's have you bring a whole bunch of granite to there and to there. Bandit camp opportunity. And at least get this everything filled in for Handy or, or Klaus or someone to come and build. Because, hey, do, you know, stone walls do take a long time to build. Um, let's look at this and call this one done. So that is Sangria. We'll leave that running for... A day? Next three days. Okay, we'll leave that there so we remember why we're doing that. And sent us a message. Uh, Huntsman from Acordamino. Apparently bandits based in a nearby camp have been raiding their caravans. Yeah, they've been raiding us too. You, or They've asked us to destroy it, which means eliminating all, enemy, all enemies and turrets. If we succeed, their relations will improve and will, they'll send us a reward of 2,400 silver. That sounds like a really dangerous way to make 2,400 silver. I'm going to pass on that one. But I'm hearing gunshots already? No? What was that little noise? Anyway, David, you are hauling steel to power conduit. What did I sign you to do that would bring steel over? I don't remember. But I will... It was... It was this room. I didn't think that I had clicked on something that took steel, though. Maybe I did. Anyway, with that, let's call this one done. So, lots getting done, and next time we'll we'll do more. It's been Noble Rambler. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.